Um, next up, we have a transportation report, and we welcome Mr. Snyder. Good evening, President Meyer, members of the board, Ms. Hamburg, Ms. Marshall. It's a pleasure to be here before you this evening to provide a transportation update with where we've been and where we're going this year. So tonight on our uh, presentation itinerary, uh, we're going to talk about seven things. Who we serve, our method in going about serving our students in our community. We're going to go on a trip or two together and what we'll discuss what we do in between routes, what's trending across the country, keeping students in an in-person learning environment, and finally, and the most important I believe tonight, is why are drivers choosing to drive for Westerville City Schools? So who we serve? We offer over 10,000 students transportation services a day. That's 20,000 rides a day that we offer our students and community. We serve 25 Westerville City School District buildings, meaning our three high schools, five middle schools, 15 elementary schools, our preschool program here at the ELC, and the Academic Enrichment Center. We also provide service for three career centers, two in Columbus and one at DACC, nine private and charter schools, seven special education service provider locations. This is the number that caught me first. We offer over 2.8 million rides per year, or for those Ohio State fans in the room, that's 32 home Ohio State football games in a year. That's a lot of football. Our method, the way in which we go about doing it, to provide approximately 20,000 rides a day, it takes a three-tier routing system. The majority of our routes have a high school, middle school, and elementary setup. 116 school buses in the fleet, 98 total school bus routes this year for the 2024-25, 69 Westerville Career Center pairings of some sort, 22 of our routes serve our magnet schools along with St. Paul students and a Westerville City School elementary route. We have seven dedicated routes serving private and charter schools. Also in our MyVan fleet of 24 vehicles that are assigned to daily transportation services, 21 of those vehicles um, are our MyVan routes, and there are also three spares, serving 28 locations and approximately 180 students. And that program continues to grow each year. We serve over 5,200 school bus stops per day and approximately 70 regularly scheduled middays between the hours of 9.30 and 1.30. A call out here for our team and our department is the majority of school districts in the state of Ohio, once you get outside of the urban areas, the size of their fleet dramatically drops to many of them 20 or less buses in their entire district. So when you think about Westerville and the number of buses that we have on the road each day between 9.30 and 1.30, in some areas we're triple the amount of total buses they have in their entire fleet. And again, those are our kindergarten middays, our preschool middays, work studies, community outings, uh, modified schedules, et cetera. So let's go on a trip or two for just a moment. Our school buses and my vans travel over 8,000 miles per day combined. That's the equivalent of going from New York City to Los Angeles, back to New York City, and back to LA in one day. Over 1.4 million miles per year, that's more than six round trips from the Earth to the moon. I think about the Apollo 13 mission and how long it took them to get there and back. We do that in a year six times. Our MyVan fleet travels over a quarter million miles per year. A quarter million miles per year. And I have to highlight that our MyVan program is celebrating its sixth year this fall. That program launched in 2018 and we are starting into our sixth year. Um, and a number of our drivers who are with us today were with us from the beginning six years ago. So what about in between our routes? Our team of school bus drivers, my van drivers, mechanic technicians, office support staff, and department administrators take part in welcoming over almost 400 people to our first time riders event earlier this month, participating in over 2,000 combined hours of training and education, all centered around student wellness and safety, as well as our employees as well supporting approximately 2,000 co-curricular and extracurricular field trips. Noting here that those 2,000 extracurricular and co-curricular trips, many of those trips require more than one driver. For example, a Friday night football game for one school might use seven to 10 vehicles for that one evening. That's not included in that 2,000 number. Completing 960 preventative maintenance services and over 1,500 work orders each year, keeping our fleet safe for our students and staff. 
And I want to call out and just a note that the building that we're currently in was renovated and replaced in 2011, about 13 years ago. Um, and our mechanics and our entire department continue to benefit from that investment that the community made um, in our department back in 2011. We also provide school bus safety training to grades K through three and conducting evacuation drills for all students who ride our vehicles. Our drivers and staff, department staffs, also attend school events, sporting contests, award ceremonies, graduations, parades, concerts, and so much more. And those are not always related to the field trips in which they provide for. So what's trending? This is the question that we get often from both community members as well as district leadership. Where are the drivers in Ohio? A nationwide reduction in school bus drivers was presented over 10 years ago. And in Ohio, we've noted the following. In the fall of 2020, there were approximately 25,000 school bus drivers on record with the Department of Education and Workforce. Noting that that is not CDLs, that is school bus drivers who are certified by the Department of Education with their pre-service certificate. So then a few years later, in October of 2023, it was noted that there were approximately 18,000 school bus drivers in the state of Ohio nearly a third of a reduction, if you will, in the workforce in the state. In some areas of the country, the driver shortage is as high as 25%. In some regions, one in four buses across the country is unstaffed. For the school year for 24-25 here in Westerville, we'll start the year with six unfilled positions. 98 bus routes and five contracted floaters is 103 total positions. Maintaining an in-person learning experience for our students. So how do we work to keep students in school? Uh, pairing our Magnet and St. Paul students with that program being an entire district-wide program, we're able to utilize those pairings for Magnets and St. Paul, as well as the elementary pairings that we did two years ago with the staggered starts. By combining the Magnet St. Paul program, we were able to bring our elementary buildings back to one bell schedule. So here's a few statistics looking back to the early release, delayed starts, and remote days. In FY23, so the 22-23 school year, we had 23 days with instructional time disrupted. That may have been through early releases at the high school and middle schools. There were a few days where one middle school actually early released two hours early. We also had a situation where Genoa Middle School went in what we referred to as remote learning. In the FY24, so this past school year, we had 13 days of disrupt disrupted educational or instructional time, noting that we only had to impact the high school and middle schools with the 30 minute, 20 minute early release. So call out to our team, to our drivers. There was one day in 2023, in the spring of 23, we had over 70 drivers in a single day providing coverage to cover an additional assignment that they don't do on a daily basis. They may have been covering a middle school for another route, a high school for another route, a shuttle between two buildings, a um, varies, right? We, had a, um, we have an attendance book that we keep track of all of this and somebody referred to it as either a mosaic or a Van Gogh, depending on the way that you looked at it. Is it something beautiful or something kind of scary, right? So we also introduced um, this past school year uh, contracted floaters. And that's a position where, um, like the food service department also adopted recently, it's a position where it's a contracted substitute position. They report each day to cover whatever we need them to cover in the morning and the afternoon. So ultimately, why do drivers choose Westerville City Schools? School bus drivers are choosing to drive for us, and here are just a few of the reasons why. Competitive wages, excellent benefits, we cover all of our upfront hiring costs, paid training. There are several districts in the central Ohio area that still require a driver to, main, or to obtain their CDL and all of the necessary certifications prior to being on the payroll. We offer the opportunity for our drivers to be paid for their training hours. We've also modified our hiring practices where we allow our CDL trainees to hire on first as our MyVan drivers, whether it be contracted or substitute. That's an easier pathway to immediately become an employee with the district, which also provides those employees an opportunity for experience, if you will, exposure to the district. Where are our schools? Where are the streets? Where are the roads? So it's a pathway to get those drivers onboarded with Westerville sooner. We also have sign-on and recruitment incentive opportunities. 
We have an award-winning team of drivers. I have to make a shout out to our eight mechanics and Sean Dawson, who's also in the room, our fleet manager. Um, we have an incredible group of guys who are turning the wrenches and spinning the tires, so to speak, to keep our fleet up and running. And we also have a nationally recognized fleet. Finally, we are working diligently with district leadership and different departments to create a culture of community and a welcoming environment. Last school year, we had five drivers leave other districts mid-year to join Westerville. Our drivers are out recruiting for us. They meet others on field trips. They eat, meet others out in the community at dinner and at different events, right? And they talk about us in a positive way. And those individuals say, tell me more, what's going on? We have a website that we send them to. And again, it kind of all goes back to a creating a culture of community and a welcoming environment. And speaking of welcoming, um, earlier this month, this is where I have some fun because it's, it's close to my heart. We have our first time writers program that celebrated 16 years this year. And when you see some of the students come for the first time to ride a school bus for the first time, it's something special. And what's also special about it is when the parents come along for that first ride. You see a gentleman in the top right corner giving a thumbs up to his son and you know taking that first picture. It's a relief to those families. It's a relief to those students. Um, I have to give a shout out, and he's here with us tonight, to Alan Hunt. This is one of his pride and joys when it comes to our, our every year. Um, his leadership and his dedication and passion for the program is noted. Um, there in the bottom left-hand corner, you see one of our newest secretary dispatchers um, at the computer. But again, this program, um, <laughs> This program, 16 years, um, it all started because we had families come during the summer and call us and say, my students never, my child's never been on a bus. Could you take them for a ride? And myself and a couple of others go out to a bus, they'd get on board and we'd take them around the block. Um, but certainly this program is, is an amazing thing. Um, and we have a saying in our department um, for our new students and for our students that are returning, for many of our drivers, they can't wait to meet them later this week. Um, some of our drivers who have been driving, our, our senior driver has 41 years of school bus driver experience. She's been doing this a long time. And um, we look forward to meeting our students later this week. Randy, I know you have um, several of your team members yes. here, and I know they like to not always be in the spotlight, but I just really appreciate them all coming out tonight, if you could introduce them. Certainly. Um, from left to right, Bob Lyon, the Director of Purchasing and Logistics. Um, so pr transportation is one of his areas. Sean Dawson, I mentioned him earlier, um, our fleet manager and um, oversees the fleet as well as the mechanics. Antoine Sidbury is our assistant manager who oversees uh, many aspects of the department, in particular the hiring and training program. Mildred Bauman, who is here toward her the front, um, she oversees our special uh, transportation for students with specialized needs um, in the MyVan program and some of our other special education programs. Alan, who I mentioned earlier, Alan Hunt, um, is our student safety liaison. He is our person who works with our building administrators, um, working on creating environments in our school buses that are safe, encouraging, and nurturing um, for our drivers and for our staff. Um, and she's here as well. Char Smith is our local 719 president. Um, she also joined us this evening, and, and Shar, again, to you and your team, as well as to the entire department. Um, our, we are, I am proud of the team that I work with day in and day out, so thank you. <laughs> I'd certainly be happy to entertain any questions or um, any follow-up. I don't have any questions, but kudos, well done. I mean, I feel like you took us on, on a trip, absolutely. I think it gives uh, the community a really good perspective of really what's happening. Um, I really appreciate all that we're doing to recruit drivers because we all know that the transportation department, their goal is to get the kids there to school safely and on time and work their tails off. So I am just grateful for all of you, for all that you do. Um, I think you're absolutely amazing. I cannot imagine like it, it's got to be like herding cats all around and you just do it every day all day so well done thank, thank you. you i can't say it better than that you people are utterly amazing every time i drive by that building i think stop in and see what it's like and i think oh my gosh i can't measure up in one way to the work <laughs> that you people do every single day i am so thankful for every single one of you and randy a big thank you to you 
because you were the one who created the MyVan program. You're the one that came up with the idea, and it has proven to be everything that you thought it might possibly be and much more. But to your drivers, to your team, to everyone, what you do goes far beyond what most people who drive by that building think you do. It's amazing, it's inspiring, it is absolutely part of the mission of what we do here in Westerville Schools. Thanks. I will echo the sentiments and say thank you. Um, I did have a question. Is this presentation going to be available on the district website? Uh, it's available on Board Docs. Um, and we can also make it available on our, our transportation site as well. Okay. I just think that's super important. You laid this out so well to talk about the number of, you know, students you're servicing, the number of routes, because I think when we as parents, we just send our kids to the bus stop and it's like, okay, off they go. It's like the amount of work that goes into on the back end, making sure that all of those kids get to where they need to go safely and in a, you know, welcoming environment. It is no short of like a miracle feat. Really? So, yeah. so you know, a lot of parents they just you just hear from them probably whenever the uh, there's early release or something because we don't have enough drivers. But to hear about the great work that you all are doing is just phenomenal. So thank you for sharing this with us and the community. And I would be remiss if I didn't add to that a number of our drivers have been working in the district over the summer preparing our buildings to welcome back students in summer custodial work. They also work throughout the school year in covering half or full shifts sometimes in some of our buildings in um, cafeteria recess aids or custodial needs. Um, sometimes they'll substitute or if you will fill in at the warehouse. So that is another way that we're also attracting folks to come to drive for Westerville because we can fill in those gaps sometime sometimes, but also provide support in other areas of the district and the operation, so thank Great. you. Yeah, I just wanted to mention too, so to that end, my um, husband picked our daughter up from summer camp at Mark Twain this year, and uh, he was there early, and they were coming back from a field trip, so he was waiting on them to get back, and he talked with one of the, custod the summer custodians there, and he went on and on and on about how much he loved his job as being a bus driver in Westerville schools. He was just working summer custodial work um, and just the great leadership and the great team that the transportation department has. And he didn't know who my husband was from anybody, but it was just a conversation. He said, you should really put that guy on a commercial <laughs> for recruiting because he loves his job so much, so. Thank you. Uh, I, wow, I echo all these comments. I know how challenging it must be when we're short drivers. I think of like a war room of um, lots of spreadsheets of how are we gonna fill these spots. So I really do appreciate all that you guys do and how you chip in in so many different ways. I have a couple of questions though. Um, one you already answered, so thank you. Um, you had mentioned uh, that there was six unfilled positions. But that doesn't, just so people at home know exactly what that means, that doesn't necessarily mean that kids aren't getting to school, they're being filled. Correct. Uh, we will, we work each day to cover those vacancies, whether it be through the contracted floaters or our substitute drivers. Uh, we also have drivers who step up each day and I'll say, it, they come to the window and say, what can I do today to help? And then we give them their, those assignments. There are districts, not just across the country, but even here in central Ohio, I remember some nights they would post on social media, tomorrow bus 123 is not gonna be there. If your students ride bus 123, their absence will be um, excused if you're not able to bring them to school. Other districts will combine routes or run their routes later. One of our strategies with doing the early releases, certainly that's inconvenient and kind of unplanned. But our goal too by doing those early releases at the high schools and the middle schools are so that we're on time to our elementaries and on time to the preschool program. So our smallest, our youngest passengers, if you will, our youngest students have the least disruption to their day where that routine is really important for them at that age level. Thank you. I, I imagine that's pretty stressful as a, a bus driver too to make sure that you're getting to all those places that you need to get to. You actually answered my other question, so I have one last one. Mm -hmm. Um, I know the law mandates we transport kids attending private and charter schools. When we have to do early release, how does that impact them? Certainly. Um, it, it doesn't have an impact like we experience. Unfortunately, we're not able to dictate to a private or charter school to adjust their bell schedule um, due to an early release need. What that allows us, though, is for those drivers who have those routes 
our highest number of vehicles in the afternoon are on the road between 2.30 and 4 o'clock. And during that window of time, it's difficult to have those individuals who are driving routes that are not able to be split to cover. So by doing the 30 minute and 20 minute early releases, those drivers who otherwise are driving at 2.30 have an additional hour to assist in covering high school starting releasing at 135 and our, our middle schools rather starting at 220. So by doing that th uh, 3020, they're able to provide more coverage to get our routes covered so that students are able to be transported home according to the early release schedule. Thank you. I don't have any other questions, but I just really want to reiterate again, thank you all for, for all your work. Um, it is so needed and really appreciate everything you guys do. Thank you. Thanks for the presentation. My pleasure. Our pleasure. Thank you.